and welcome to week seven of our At Home and Now Prosper pilgrimage. By this stage, we are into our second week back for all students, and we come to a challenge that for many of the boys is one of their trickiest. This character strength is the appreciation of beauty and excellence. After I had seen this character strength at number 14 for myself, I made a concerted effort to try and experience a sunrise or a sunset every day as a way to connect with the beauty of our region. As the photos now show, we are truly blessed to live in a place of genuine beauty and I hope you can see that we're able to move beyond our immediate self when we stand in awe at some of these awesome sights. They're only 10 minutes from the college. This character strength actually has a number of components to it. We're not simply asked to notice beauty and excellence, but we're asked to appreciate it, which brings a whole range of decisions and skills. To appreciate something is to show it tremendous respect, and there's a feeling of gratitude attached as well. I guess this week, I'm asking each of the boys to not just concentrate on external beauty, but on inner beauty. And this can best be summed up in our college prayer, where we ask God to touch gently this life which you have created. Like all of our challenges, it asks us to go deeper in a spiritual sense. Beauty can be seen as physical and moral, and its appeal can be very different depending on who we are. We are so very blessed that the college that we're in and we're custodians of this beautiful property. Often the very first word or feeling that comes to a person when they enter our school is that it's beautiful. This is not always the case in other properties, but it's definitely a deep part of our identity and culture, which is why we're filming here in this beautiful place. Of course, the appreciation of moral beauty is also a key component of our culture. The oblate values of daring, passion, loyalty and community lead us to a deep relationship with Jesus and we're asked to see a beauty in that. If we're open to it, there is so much beauty to be seen here at the college and within our surrounding community. We can see it in the creativity of music and art, as well as the techniques of 18 various sports of the college. We can see it in the curriculum, in all the subjects, but especially maybe arts, design, English, religion, and even mathematics. We can also see it in the smiles and positivities that reach out to others and help them navigate their day. I'd like to ask each of our pilgrims to try their very best to appreciate inner beauty as much as outer beauty and there are a few techniques that can help us. Don't try to be someone that you're not. You are you. And that is one of the many things that make you beautiful and lovable. If you're unable to appreciate your own inner beauty, you will have a hard time appreciating it in others. Try to look people directly in the eyes and maintain eye contact when speaking with them. See if you can listen to people and engage with what they're saying, even if it's just small talk. Try and ask meaningful questions. Be really clear about what you mean by outer beauty. Care about people. Seek to promote peace. Be generous and extend hospitality. Do things for others and for causes in the community without looking for reward. Many of the most beautifully, internally beautiful people have something in common. They give back to the community of which they belong whether it's representing, leading a safety drive, volunteering, raising money for the disadvantaged. When we do something for the community of which we belong, we discover inner beauty. This character strength also asks us to appreciate excellence and hopefully to aspire to it. Excellence needs to be seen as much more than a grade or a score. It can come to mean any effort that went beyond previous limitations or expectations and can be moral, cultural, social, physical, musical, and intellectual. The early Christian apostles made use of an ancient Greek concept of excellence, which they saw as a chief virtue of life. And through the example of Jesus, Christians developed that understanding to take on spiritual meaning. For Christians, moral excellence is closely aligned to a belief that we were created by God with an inner dignity. Christians believe that God is just and pure, holy and good, compassionate and kind and as a result of this we believe that every one of us was made in God's image and that we have those traits in us as well. We believe that God is in us and God is growing in the lives of our people. 
according to Jesus, the greatest command in Scripture is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, our strength and our mind. But to love God with our whole mind goes beyond just knowing facts. It involves concerted effort, pondering and meditating and trying to understand Jesus better, to get to know who He is. It also implies a vital life of the intellect, the capacity for critical thought, the love of truth, wherever it's found, and a desire to explore and understand this beautiful world that's been created. In a word, we're asked to use our mind for the full potential of which God created it. There can be a danger, even in our society, of seeking comfort in the average while resenting the excellence, or either making that excellent into an idol. Both of these impulses are on display in our culture's treatment of celebrities. At times we put them on a pedestal and then we take delight in ripping them apart. The church can often also look upon excellence with some suspicion, as if it were a close cousin to pride or selfish ambition. We can also fall prey to measuring excellence in our culture in terms of social status or finances. But this is not the essence of excellence that Jesus wants to teach us. God did not weave excellence into this creation for it to be avoided, but to be embraced. Every expression of virtue of excellence, of beauty or goodness, should be allowed its proper work to stir our mind, to melt our heart and to inspire our imagination. Above all, this understanding of excellence should bring our eyes upward to the one who made us in the first place, the one whose excellence we're designed to reflect. A quote from Philippians, Finally, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, pure and lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I believe Jesus saw inner beauty when he chose to be present with the woman about to be punished by the mad and crowned for their crime of adultery. He saw past the shame and judgment and anger and saw a vulnerable, broken and beautiful person and helped the crowd and her see that as well. In one of St. Eugene de Mazenod's early Lenten homilies, he spoke to the workers of society at a very early morning mass. And at this mass were people who only seemed to be recognized by society for the jobs that they did. They were cleaners, chimney sweeps, sewerage workers, fish scalers, and their value to that society was only measured by the work they did. St. So Eugene shared with them the challenge to learn who you are in the eyes of God. This challenge asked them to discover that they have a dignity, not because of what they did, but much more importantly, for who they are. The message from St. Eugene is extended to all of us as well. If we take the time to learn who we are in God's eyes, we too will discover that we have a value, a dignity and a worth, and that these can never be removed, no matter where we find ourselves in life. I took this challenge up myself and made an effort to find out the names of every person who cleans our college so that they're not referred to as cleaners, but they are Tina, Corey, Alfredo, Bridget, Catrizia, Gladys, Kelly, Tomasina, Matthew, and Mega. This is a challenge for us all. I'd also like to share a story of our year 11 religious education students who were down at Darling Point Special School for some community and learning time with students who have many emotional, physical and intellectual challenges to deal with. I got to appreciate inner beauty and outer beauty and excellence when in the middle of our time there an alarm went off. One of the boys was a boy with non-verbal, no words, who lived with autism. And one of our year 11s was quite alarmed by the noise that was coming and the Darling Point student calmed him down and was able to show him what to do as part of the lockdown procedures. He did all of this without saying a word and the year 11 followed exactly what needed to be done, I saw a clear example of beauty and excellence. And I hope that this week brings for you open eyes, open ears and open heart to see, hear and feel an appreciation of beauty and excellence. When we do that, when we open our eyes, our ears and our hearts, we see things that we may never have seen before. This is a challenge worthy of accepting in this beautiful time that we live and learn. I wish you well. Appreciate beauty and excellence, but in a brand new way. The challenge is worth it. Kiakaha. Thank you.